Uncle Tommy. Hey, baby girl. Did I wake you? No, no, I was just resting my eyes. I've been having some insomnia. I have a crisis. Oh, don't tell me. Please don't be pregnant or have a huge drug problem. Uncle, no! It, it's worse. Oh, God save us all. I'm quitting Harvard. What? Biochemistry is just not my thing after all. I need your help. Why? You're a little genius. Who's going to win the Nobel Prize now in the family? I've decided that I want to be an actress, just like you. Aren't you going to say something? The rejection, the resilience, the blood, the sweat, the tears, and it's not all about talent. No, you have to be slightly lonely and slightly on the spectrum. You have to drop everything in a second to move to a new country to spend two months with people that you will love and you will never see again. The envy, the long hours, the no work, the onset love affairs, the crushes on the crew, the having to watch your way just in case Spielberg calls. I love it. I mean, I see you and your life and that's all I want. Please, uncle, please. Well, you don't need my permission. But I do need your help. I mean, no actor ever made it without an agent, and I was thinking that maybe you could talk to yours for me. What happened to training? Life shouldn't be that easy, Libby. Times have changed, Uncle. You either have to be a millionaire or have a million followers by the age of 21 or else you're a failure. I promise I'll study. I'll work so, 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 so hard. Just one phone call. Just put in a good word. You know I adore you. You know you're my hero. You know I would do anything for you. Okay. But you have to promise me that you will train harder than Meryl Streep, Dustin Hoffman, Al Pacino, and Kate Winslet together. Hmm? I promise. I can't speak for Sylvia, okay? Agents can be funny. So, leave it with me. I'll see what I can do. If it comes from you, then I will take a very good look at her. I mean, the apple can't be falling too far from the tree, hmm? You're awesome. Anything for you, my superstar. <laughs> Speaking of which, are you feeling all right? You're looking a little... Fat? I stopped eating carbs altogether lately, I swear. No, 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 no. You look... tired. Oh yeah, insomnia. My mom gave me some Mexican pills today, so fingers crossed. Hopefully I can sleep tonight. You know how it is. We need you looking healthy for this next round of castings. Everything is starting to open back up again, yeah? You gotta be in tip-top shape. You gotta be fresh-faced, thin, muscly, tan, available, rugged, clean-cut, yet alluring. Brush up on your sword fighting skills, your horse riding skills, Shakespeare, the Bulgarian accent, tons of stuff shooting in Bulgaria right now. And watch those dark circles under your eyes, dear. Okay, Sylvia, thank you for the pep talk. May you have a restful night, Tomas. Now that is marvelous news, just marvelous. Oh, isn't that marvelous, darling? Mm -hmm. I, myself, was homecoming queen in 1932. Thank you, mother, as I was saying. I could just picture her in that convertible, radiant. This means we must start on the dress immediately. I will look at fabrics, you start looking at accessories. This is going to be perfect. It will be perfect. Well, I was actually thinking that we could buy a dress from Mrs. Hooper's store instead. You know, perfectly matching that sweet orchid hairpiece she sells, too. Now, now, dear. We must use what we've got, don't we, darling? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you love to see a big flowery dress and a beautiful matching orchid hairpiece on your one and only daughter, Daddy, dear? Little girl. She's not a little girl anymore, Bradley. She'll be a woman soon. I don't believe no boy's gonna be looking at my baby that way. Nor will I tolerate any more of them knocking on your window at night. Dear, dear, it's all in good fun. And remember, you knocked on my window more than a few times when we were going steady. Did I speak to you? I was just saying. You're always just saying. It seems like I can't have a thought by myself around here these days. Oh, Bradley, don't get your knickers in a twist. I would never want to make you feel anything but a king in this house. <laughs> That's right. Because I am the king of this house. And as I sit on this table, I will not let my baby girl parade herself like a floozy on a goddamn parade. But Daddy! What are you saying, Bradley? I won't allow my baby girl to make a fool of herself like that. Why can't we be like the Johnsons down the street? What on earth are you talking about, little girl? Lizzo wears dresses for Mrs. Hooper's store. 
And her family has a TV and a transmitter radio. And I have nothing! And now you want to take away my dream of becoming a homecoming queen? May I remind you, dear, that it was you who marveled at the orchid in my hair as I waved at you at the 1932 parade. Precisely. If it wasn't for that day, we would not be married today, dear. You know what I mean. Who wants more potatoes? You know I can't eat more potatoes, Mother. I have to fit into that dress. There will be no dress, and I am sick and tired of potatoes. Always bloody potatoes. Well, it's the only thing we can afford. Do you know how hard it is to plan a proper meal when your goon of a husband comes home drunk every night and can't keep a job to save his family's life? Huh? You try cooking without any money. And I walk up and down that street every day looking for a job, sweating my butter off, trying to keep my family afloat. It isn't my fault the union decided to go on strike. And it isn't my fault that I was born into a poor family who can't afford a hairpiece and a transmitter radio. And I cannot believe that I married a man who can't even remember that today is our wedding anniversary! If I love you time and again I will try to say all I want you to know soon you leave me off you would go in the mist of day never never to Homecoming Queen? I loved your niece. She has such a spunky look. I think I'm gonna sign her. Really? Well, you gotta take a gamble on people. You know, just like I took a gamble on you when I plucked you out of that, uh, did I pluck you out of that? You look really well rested. Did you take those pills? Did I take those pills? You won't believe this, but I had the strangest dream. Oh? Yeah, tell me tell me about that. I had a dream that you were my wife. That would be so weird. Right? We would never work as a couple. I know. Ugh. You no. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Brush up on your sword sight. So. Okay. <laughs> you gotta be in. <laughs> you gotta be in. <laughs> tan, muscly, allure. Thin, muscly, tan, available. Muscly, tan, available, rugged, clean shaven, yet available. Yet alluring. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'll get this eventually. <laughs> if this was a gag reel, holy. Love it. Give me five. Good luck, and don't forget to subscribe.